Hello, I have need to design a um, kind of slightly upper class uh, artist, slightly swanky artist's um, studio, live-in studio, uh, above a warehouse for a game. So I figured I'd go ahead and do that here in uh, on the camera. Uh, right now I'm going to freehand draw some of the stuff, just because if you try and do it all in Blender, it's very easy to start to lose track of your scale and get very square rooms, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to sketch it out. Now this is going to be above a warehouse, so it's only the third or fourth floor, maybe even just the second floor, but it's a significant distance above the ground because warehouses have very tall um, tall spaces. And also because it's a warehouse, it's not, uh, it's not at the, any of the smoothly, gracefully curved areas or anything like that. It's very much converted warehouse space. Um, so because it's an artist's studio, one of the core things we're going to need to have is a big window. And I'm going to make it actually come in. So um, this here is, looking at it from above, I'm looking down on a window, uh, a huge window. And this will shine into the main working space. So the, basically the entire artist's studio is going to be um, based around this central area where the artist has their paintings and whatever, and whatever scattered on the ground. Um, and this will be when you walk into the apartment, this will be the main space. So if we're going to talk about how we want the rest of this space to look, there's a lot of temptation to draw square lines around it. And that's not a very good way to do it. Um, so what I've instead been thinking about is if the warehouse had an upper floor, which used to be where uh, the workers or the management would stay, and then what you could do is you could knock out a lot of those walls and you would have the same kind of chunky appearance that you would get but you would have a lot of, uh, of interesting interior spaces rather than square spaces. So if I was going to do that then I would split it up into two floors and I would probably bring it across like this and then I would bring it out like this. There's no curves because it's not uh, it's a warehouse. There's nothing like that here. But we can go ahead and create uh, the classic shape for this sort of situation would be an L shape, like so. And uh, this L shape would be good if we wanted to put an elevator here. So we'll go ahead and put in some kind of freight elevator. Now I don't know whether we want it to exit to the south or to the west here. Um, or both, or even just out this way, and that would probably make the most sense, wouldn't it? So we've got an elevator, a freight elevator here. But we also have the main entrance here, which goes out and then goes down some stairs. Uh, and which one you'd use would obviously be up to you. Um, so this gives us some space to play with in terms of the main living area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and assume that this area down here is for when he's not working and he's just kind of lazing around. Um, but it could also be used for kitchen space, depending on our preference. Uh, so... Hmm... I think that using it as a kitchen space would chop up the uh, environment a little bit better, so that's probably the best idea. So what we'll do is we'll put in some uh, some walls here, but they're not walls, they're just um, islands. So we'll have something like this. And of course that means that we've got to have all of the all the various facilities that we need, uh, you know, uh, sinks and, and dishwasher, dishwashers and so on. Uh, and we'll just have a nice little area like this. Um, now what we can do here is to make it so that it's not quite so, doesn't clash quite so badly with the rest of the room. Let's go ahead and tilt this like so. And that actually gives us a good opportunity to make this area have a dinner table of some sort, not a big one, um, something like this with just four chairs. And we need to have a little bit of space uh, demarcation here. So we'll go ahead and put in, I don't know, something like a screen or something. We'll decide on that later. But basically, we've got it so that the kitchen and the work area are split up just a little bit. And that leaves this nook here uh, with the um, place where you can uh, relax and watch TV. 
and maybe have a friend crash on your couch. So there's our TV, and there's our various places to sit, and here's a little GameCube controller. Okay, so now we're into the area where we're going to have a hard time seeing it, because the rest of this space is going to be two floors rather than just one floor. So the first thing is we're going to have a door here that leads back into uh, some various storage areas. Um, and the way that this was originally laid out was for management, of course, which means that this, this area back here used to be uh, a set of halls and offices, which means that we probably had a room here and a room here and a hallway that ran between them. So if we're going to knock out some walls, then what that leaves us with is a pillar and an open area here, so something like this. And then these can just be cabinets uh, full of food or whatever. Now it's important to remember that your walls do have some level of thickness, so don't underplay that, um, or your space will be a lot more cramped than you intended. So, you know, just a walk-in storage area here. But we can actually go ahead and use this space to continue on for whatever else we want this area to have. So I think this is a good place to put the circuit breaker and other sort of things we might need, like the water heater and so on and so forth. We don't have a basement, um, and the rest of the studio and the rest of the warehouse probably isn't heated. So having a nook with that stuff in it makes a lot of sense. Now this area is supposed to be a little bit crowded. It's not supposed to be um, uh, open area like the rest of it because we want to have a contrasting set of elements here. Uh, so what are we going to do with the rest of this space? Because we have a walk-in here, but it doesn't you know, go anywhere. I think what we should do is we should bring it up here and then bring it across like this. And then this means that we can have this space back here, like so. And I actually think that this is a really cool way to do it, um, at least in theory, because we can cover this wall with windows, which gives us uh, a space back in here that has some amount of uh, hominess to it. And this can be where you might have uh, the roommate live or something similar. So we can put in another couch and bookshelves and a futon and that sort of stuff. And then this can be the downstairs bathroom with a door um, probably right here uh, but this is a very wide space here so we want to fill it in with whatever debris we happen to decide fits best there um, now one of the issues we've got here is that we've got one door here and then there's this, all of this space that's inaccessible so what we actually want to do is put another door here like so. And this space I'll leave uh, kind of questionable for the moment, but it's pretty clear that we're gonna need to have some kind of stuff happening. Um, we can't just leave it as uh, totally open space. Now this leads us to the second floor and we have to decide what we want to do about that. Now because I'm doing this in an image editor I can simply duplicate this and drag it over like so. And we can go ahead and do the second floor on this image here. Now the second floor, I think that we can go ahead and erase all of this, but we're going to need to have a staircase. And the way that I've drawn it up here, there is no room for a staircase. And that's because I wanted the staircase to be here. So pencil, thank you. Uh, so the staircase is going to come up and around like this. And this is going to be an area where uh, we have, you know, stuff. So this is going to be where the second floor is. But of course, it's also going to come down, and it's going to sit on top of the first floor in most of those regions, like so. Now this door doesn't exist, and this door doesn't exist, so it's all like this. Now the question is, what part of this is, overlooks the main area, as opposed to is closed off from the main area? And I think the best answer to that is to take a look at where the bathroom was, because this is where the other bathroom will have to be, up here. And that makes it so that it makes sense for us to have this whole region 
um, orbit around the bathroom because the bathroom obviously won't have any windows looking out over the main space um, in any kind of meaningful sense. But also it means that we can split this space up uh, in a little bit more interesting of a fashion. Normally the um, impulse would be you wall this area off, but I think we'll do the opposite and we'll make this area the open space. And that means that we'll be able to look down over the kitchen area and of course see out the window, which is a big draw. Uh, whereas if we did it over here, you, the window wouldn't be as easily visible and you'd just be looking at the, uh, the elevator. There's nothing wrong with that though, so I'm thinking maybe we do a little bit of that here too. So we leave those two spaces open, but we close off out here. Now, exactly how we close off, uh, if we're closing something off, that implies that, um, uh, that there's a reason for a wall to be there. And I definitely want there to be some walls here. I don't want it to be just a straight, um, uh, nothing but, but a, a minor fence. So we're going to go ahead and assume that these are walls. We're going to actually bring it in like this. And the reason for that is because we can make this textured uh, set in of some kind, so we have a lot of vertical complexity happening here. Uh, and exactly what we put there is up to us. Um, we could even put it like a fireplace or something if we really wanted to, although I don't see any reason to do that. Uh, the upper floor isn't going to have very much in the way of living space because um, this is uh, uh, down here is where most of the living actually happens, but it does need a master bedroom for our actual artist in question. Now we can actually put that here, but that would mean that uh, this space would be um, uh, cut off kind of awkwardly. I think it makes a lot more sense for it to be here. And so we end up with this sort of layout. Um, now, when you're talking about someone's bedroom, you're obviously not going to want to uh, have it completely open at all the time. Even if you live mostly on your own, um, you're going to need to have some level of, of privacy in case friends come over. But I think that since this is refitted from an, a warehouse, uh, I think it makes sense for this to be walled off using just like Japanese screens or something, rather than actually have a proper wall there. Um, and in turn, of course, we can uh, we can take a look at all of this space here and notice that we have almost no wall space. So we're going to have to have this be a pretty Spartan bedroom in terms of what's actually in it. Uh, and so I'm thinking um, there won't be a desk or anything in this bedroom. It's basically you go here just to crash. Uh, and so all we have are a couple of places to store your clothes. But because it's retrofitted, there's no walk-in closet. And I think that that would be what we could put against this wall here. Um, this could just be a, a closet space, like so. With some kind of sliding door situation going on here. Um, and then this would be a very brightly lit area um, where you could hang out or whatever. Uh, now, there's a lot of open space here, and if you were going to be putting together an apartment building, obviously this kind of open space would be uh, kind of awkward for you. Um, we also have to decide whether we want this bathroom to have two entrances or only one, and I think it would be more interesting if it only had one, so that's what I'm going to do. But that was actually going to be the point of my, con of my uh, little talk here. We're trying to make this into a video game setting, so we have to think in terms of what the player will see when he's wandering through it and how the player will react um, uh, to being able to see various things and not being able to see various things. And because of that, there's a lot of details that we may want to put in that don't make a lot of sense for actual living space. The biggest difference between video game living space and actual living space is that video game spaces have to be much larger than they should be and much emptier than they should be because video game characters don't have as good a control over their body. And you can see that pretty clearly. Uh, any video game with internal spaces, you'll see that they've scaled up the amount of empty space. Um, and so that's what I'm doing very consciously here. But there are a lot of things left that we can still fill, fill in here with whatever we would like, including this area here. Uh, and I think it makes sense for this to just be more like just clutter bookshelves or whatever. And then we can have like a little... Um, uh, couch or something here. 
Uh, and we'll just make it so that the whole place is normally used as, oh, that's a good idea. Um, we'll make it so this guy, he's not really super social, but he's got a big place and his friends like it. So let's go ahead and give him a mini bar here, or just a bar. Which means we may actually have to stretch this out some, which is not too, not too difficult. We can just go ahead and do that. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, this area here can be a sort of bar where his friends tend to tend to hang out and serve each, serve each other whiskey or whatever. Um, and, uh, and that means that it's going to have some places to sit and a pool table. Like this. And so now we've created a play space. Um, and this base deck back here makes less sense now that there is a play space. So let's go ahead and clear it out. Um, and rethink it a little bit. Uh, and I think that what makes the most sense is to actually extend this space out past what it was on the floor above so that we have a kind of uh, veranda sort of situation, but it's all internal space, right? So we can have this can actually be a veranda where you can walk out outside and see whatever there is to see. But here we can use this space as a huge walk-in closet or something. Um, it makes more sense for it to be like this, I would imagine. Hmm, maybe like this. Yeah, that'll do. And so this would be the walk-in closet here. And that gives us a bit more space for whatever we need to stick in these regions. Um, and it also closes off the area a little bit more, but allows us with a lot more space for uh, playing around. Uh, so we can you know, put in whatever we want here and make it all about hanging out with his friends. Because verticality is kind of cool, I'm thinking about adding a short set of upward staircases here into his private area. Uh, and that'll also do a good job of demarking um, where his private space is as compared to the um, uh, public spaces. Now, there's one last thing that I kind of want to do, and I think it's a cool idea. Because this was originally two floors rather than just one floor, I'm thinking that there should be two stops on the elevator. And that one of those stops just cuts straight across and is just like a walkway, a catwalk sort of situation, right here. And you could have like a wall with some posters here uh, that would really be, be clear as to that you should you know, go that way to play. And we'll reshape this vertical space a little bit like so. Uh, and of course if we wanted to have this come up a little bit further what we would do is we would actually have it wrap around again uh, in the back but then this would actually be closed off so we would have a door in midair with nothing on the other side it would just be like a bricked off door um, and that will be a fun little piece of aesthetics to add in. Alright, so with that in mind, in the next episode I'll go ahead and block it out in Blender.